Hello everybody and good day. This is Fred with Tech Talk and we are coming at you today with a subscriber requested video. You can see the comment up by our friend Dan right now. And basically the question is in reference to DAWA and Smart PSS, how do we set up administrative account uh, with administrative privileges and a user account uh, for the end user, uh, the client, uh, where they have live view and playback features as well? Uh, it's a relatively simple process we're going to cover right now. All right, kids, let's get into the meat and potatoes. Before we do, you know the drill. There is a subscribe button in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Please click that and subscribe to our channel so you'll be notified when we upload future content. Also, like the video if it's useful. And as always, leave comments. Again, this video is based on a subscriber comment. We shared that earlier. So yes, the first thing we want to do is download Smart PSS by DAWA. If you have not already done that, there's a link going across the top of your screen right now um, that will instruct you on how to download this uh, program, where to find it, uh, and how to connect devices to it, whether it be NVR or IP camera. And once you set that up, you have essentially set up your administrator account. OK, the admin account has access to all of the configuration fittings uh, and features. So what we'll want to do is we want to issue users um, their privileges. We'll use a uh, an automotive uh, dealership as a car dealership. As an example, um, we would want to give the sales manager and the service manager access to the cameras in their areas. So we'd want to create them accounts with user level permissions to view those cameras. Live view, playback, if it's a people counting camera, uh, we give them access to that because it's important for conversion rates, right? Uh, they'll want to know how many customers come in on a given day versus sales. That will give them conversion rates. So what we're going to do, um, we've established the account at this time. Now we're going to log into it and we'll get into it. Um, the icon that we are going to uh, worry about right now is the user icon. It's on the bottom row, the configuration row. When we click that, it will let us uh, create users. Um, and as you see, the admin count has already been established when we set up um, the program. So there are three icons right here, add role, add user, and delete. The first thing we're going to do is add a role, okay? And this role will be service department. Okay, and we do not want to have them have access to all the menu rights. Okay, as we said, we want live view, playback, and people counting. And the next thing you would do is you would go to that location. Um, Har is actually a um, an automotive outfit, although this is an auto body shop. And you could pick the cameras that pertain, say there's four cameras, that pertain to the sales department or service department, I'm sorry. Um, so we can write in remarks, service cams, if you want. Again, you don't have to write anything there if you don't want to. Okay, so we have the service department as a role. We've selected our privileges, um, and we've selected our cameras. Now we're gonna hit save, okay? And as you can see, we've created the service department. Now we need to add users to the service department, okay? Um, and our first user um, will say Fred Wentworth is the service manager, okay? And we will create him a password. And we will give him all three options, people counting, playback, live view. Um, we want them to be able to use HAR and all three of the service cameras. Um, maybe a person is not the sales manager and they only need one or two of these cameras. Um, you can eliminate these uh, and remove access to the ones you don't want them to see. Uh, but Fred is certainly sales or the service manager and he can see all of them. All right, perfect. So all three cameras, we have live view and playback. We're just going to hit save, folks. 
the username has existed. Interesting. So let's do Fred Wentworth one then. How's that? Okay. Good. So now what we can do is we can actually switch logins. We're going to log out of the admin account by hitting switch user here. And we will log back into Smart PSS. I think it's time tonight, huh? I probably have my VPN on, that's why it's doing that. But let's try this again here. There we go. Okay, so we're going to log in. We did Fred Wentworth 1. We'll put in the password. And as you can see, the configuration panel, all the icons are gone, right? We only have permission to do the three things that we talked about, live view, playback, and people counting. Let's go into live view, and we'll verify we only have access to those four HAR cameras. Main parking works. Channel 2 works. Roll-up door works. And the back drive works. Now let's try to click on something we don't have privilege for. Let's try to look at Spanish trace here. Won't let us do anything. Fail to open. You have no right to operate. Okay. So that shows you it works. That is how you set up uh, user accounts and user roles under the admin umbrella. Something that is a little bit different with Smart PSS than... IBMS 4200 if you are a HIK Connect user. Um, this information, this account, is useful on this laptop. Okay, I can't download Smart PSS, unfortunately, onto another laptop and then log in as Fred Wentworth 1 um, with this password. It's not going to recognize it. That is one of the minuses when you talk about Smart PSS. You have to install the program on each computer you have to attach the devices as an administrator um, and then issue the user level uh, privileges on that computer after the admin account has been established. Sometimes that's a little bit of a struggle because when we install one of these systems, and again, like a car dealership, when we have the class after the installation, we have to tell the sales manager, the service manager, um, the GM, the owner, to bring their laptops, their tablets, their cell phones, so we can put this uh, program on their laptops. Um, again, the cell phone's a little bit easier. Um, you create a Gmail account or an email account for that facility, um, and you can issue users that can then log in that way through their phone. There's another video on that process going across the top of the screen right now. Uh, I like to ramble and I'm off topic, but uh, that's how you do it. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. We'll see you in the field.